scared these city walls these city walls only to be with you you still have a what I'm looking for but still Before you sit down, I need you to do something for me. I need you to turn to as many people as possible and ask them, are you still searching? Ask them, still searching? Still searching? Still searching? <laughs> Always. As you're finding your seat this morning, I want to welcome you, and uh, I want to share with you that, uh, and maybe I'm not alone in this, but from as far back as I can remember in my life, I was, I was always taught to finish what I started. I was always told, you know, finish your chores, finish your homework, finish your practice, finish, finish your meal, clean your plate. And this, was, this was how I was raised, and I was rewarded and I, and I was taught to be grateful and thankful for what I had accomplished, for what I had achieved, for what I had completed. And so much of my life, and maybe of your life as well, is messaging that uh, what, is, what matters, the reason that we give thanks, the, the things that we focus on when we are thankful are those things that, that are finished those things that we have achieved, those things that we have completed, when we've checked all the boxes and crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's, when we've finished the list, these are things to celebrate. Even when we're doing things that we don't enjoy, how good does it feel to be done? We're thankful that it's over. But the problem is, it never seems to be enough. Doesn't matter how good the meal was, when I finished the meal, I'd, I'd just like some more. 
when I have an experience that I enjoy or something that I accomplish, often I'm thinking, okay, what's next? There, there, there's this relentless restlessness. And all the things that we accomplish and all the things that we accumulate, even the things that we survive, don't seem to be enough. You see, there's a message that we don't often hear. And we very rarely hear it in a place like this. And that is that we are built for the journey. We are, we are fashioned for the quest. We are built for the challenge and, and even the obstacles, even the struggles, even, even the things that seem overwhelming to us. We are, we are fashioned to be capable of that, that search, of that journey. We are, we are fashioned for it. And so today, as, as we think about what does it mean to give thanks, what are we thankful for? I think typically we're thankful for things that have been accomplished, things that we have received, things that we have achieved. But today, I want us to focus our thanks on where we are and what lies ahead, that we're not done, that we're still in the process, in the fight, that the challenges ahead of us, even the struggles that we will face, we were built for them. We are capable of them. And I want us to give thanks for that. I'd like for us to be thankful for the present and thankful for the opportunity and thankful that we're not done yet. Jesus said this in John chapter 16, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Good morning. If you guys would stand with us. And we'll start with a little bit of letting go and sing, uh, I Surrender.
I quit. I'm done. Had enough. I can't, I can't do this anymore. I surrender. I give up. You ever said that? Ever gotten to the point in your life where it just was too much? Where the, the road ahead seemed too overwhelming? Where the, the, the pitfalls of the past were... were we're too deep. Familiar with that? You know what it is to look in the mirror and say, I can't, I can't do this anymore? You're not alone. My suspicion is that we've all been there. We all know where the, where the threshold is, where the limit is, where, where we come to a point where, where we realize that the weight of our imperfection is, is overwhelming our expectations. And when you think you're done, you're in the perfect place to realize that you're not alone. Because you're not. And you don't have to take my word for it, and I don't want you to take my word for it today. I want you to take each other's word for it. I want to do something really uncomfortable and unusual, and I realize those of you who are like two feet from me are very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> but I want, to, I want to take a risk, and we've done this in the first two hours. And some folks shared some very intimate disappointments with God. You see, see we don't have to pretend. We don't have to. We surrender our expectations. We surrender our agendas. We surrender the idea that we have to be finished 
And we have to be perfect. And we have to pretend like that's where we are because we're not. We're all in process. We're all on the journey. So what was it? What was the first time that God let you down? What was your greatest disappointment with God? Perhaps it was your career didn't pan out the way you thought your marriage isn't exactly as, as, as wonderful or as romantic as you imagined. Perhaps your finances are not what you need. Or perhaps what we have heard in the first two hours was the great loss that has touched so many people's lives. Is there anyone who wants to let us know? What was your greatest disappointment? What was your first disappointment with God? I know some of your stories. Anybody want to say that? Not for yourself, but because I'm sure there is someone else here who has experienced that same disappointment, that same frustration. Anybody? The courageous. Up here. I'm heading up there in a minute. I won't say it was my first disappointment, but it was probably one of the greatest disappointment is the joy of having a child and then having the doctor tell you that the child has Down syndrome. And you talk about going from a high to a low in questioning why. Anybody else have that? Anybody else know that? The disappointment, thank you for that. Thank you guys for being here, all of you. I think, I think we may not have the same story, but we all have the same experience of loss and of unfulfilled dreams, unmet expectations. When um, my, my greatest disappointment, and it really, really challenged my faith in God, was I lost my husband to suicide. I had, you know, two little children. Um, and... Um, I was kind of using my father, who had always been my rock of faith, to kind of get me through that. And then I lost my father. Mm -hmm. And so it was just such a challenge. And for years, I just turned my back on God. And I felt, you know, if you've turned your back on me, why should I turn my back on you? And recently, I've come back to my faith in God and um, just trusting in him. But it was for a long time. I just was in the dark, basically. Anybody else get that? You understand that? Uh, it's, 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 not a, it's not a long distance journey for most of us to say, yeah, okay, I haven't experienced that same thing, but I know what it is. I know what it is to have my heart broken, to have my expectations shattered, these are the things that, that we are invited to surrender. These are the hard things to surrender, to let go of. We think of surrender as giving up, but surrender isn't giving up. Surrender is letting go, looking in and letting go, saying, saying what, are, what are the irrational expectations? What are the obligations? What are the, what are, what are the fears and the frustrations that I have that prevent me from embracing, embracing where I am, from, from, from being grateful for the opportunities and the challenges that are in my life right now. I think we all have them. I think we all have these, these, these frustrations and expectations and obligations that we are, we are invited to surrender, to lay them down. And this is where grace finds us. Grace doesn't find us when we're done. Doesn't, grace doesn't find us when we're finished. Grace finds us in the pain. Grace finds us in the mess. And this is what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful that he finds us in the mess and he says, come to me. 
right where you are, just as you are. Come to me, and I will find you there. Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke, unlike the yoke of perfection, unlike the yoke of accomplishment, unlike the yoke that says, you can come when you're done, my yoke is easy and my burden is light.
part of the way we enter into that uh, thankful present is through generosity when we can cast aside our care and surrender our care for what is ahead we can look back with gratitude and recognize we have been given something worth sharing something worth blessing others with when our concern is not for what is ahead when we are confident that we are capable of whatever comes our way we can be generous in the moment in the present so with that in mind, I invite you to take a moment to express that generosity So we receive our offering. It's just a reminder that when we are fully present, when we are unburdened with the anxiety and the care and the frustration and our fear of the future, we can enter into the present with generosity. And that generosity is the incarnation, the expression of gratitude. So as we receive our offering, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, thank you for uh, the hope that we have and for the capability you have given us for the journey. And I pray that we would recognize that you have equipped us and blessed us to help and come alongside and encourage and bless others. And I pray that we would be mindful of that and set free to do it. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
So that's where he finds us. He finds us in the mess, on the journey, in our incompleteness, in our imperfection. Says I'm with you. So in the mess, in the frustration, in the disappointment, there's a reason to be thankful. And I want to suggest the reason to be thankful is because we're not done yet. Because we still haven't found what we're searching for. And because we're not done, we know we're not alone. Because he's with us in the mess. It's a reason to give thanks. It's a reason to rejoice It's a reason to, no matter where we are in our present circumstances, to look at the obstacles and the challenges, to look at the struggles and the uncertainties that are ahead of us and know that we have been fashioned for this. We have been fashioned for the journey. We long to be done, but we we have been made for the quest, for the adventure. he has made us so that we are never alone in that quest or on that journey because it's there where we find what we are capable of it is there on the journey in the quest, on the adventure in the struggle carrying the load, bearing the burden accepting the challenge that we find his truly amazing grace John 14, he said this, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. way the Lord spoke to my spirit while pastor was preaching was to say that there is power in praising his name right in the middle of your storm 
right in the middle of your mess, there is healing in that. And I know as I look around this room and I look up on this stage, people I've known for years and reflecting on my own journey, which we're all still in the middle of, there have been so to put it nicely, grave disappointments, hurts, times when I have felt left down, let down, abandoned, misunderstood. And he also told me while pastor was preaching, but yes, you did that to people too. Like I have hurt people and he has had grace for me. He's had mercy for me. He's helped teach me to find forgiveness. And the song we just sang about laying it down, lay down those hurts and those things that you've been carrying for years. Just let him inhabit your praises. And so for the person maybe on the road behind you who might be in a different place on their journey, Y'all know how it is when you're in the midst of some deep grief and it's hard to find the words to say, God, you're, you're still good. For that person, I would like you to stand up and let's praise his name together on this song, Amazing Grace. And sing it for that person beside you, that person behind you. Think about the walk you have been on and how he has kept his word, his promise of unending mercy and grace for us sinners, us wretches who, can we ever earn that? No, we can't. He just gives that to us. So let's sing this song together. If you could stand with me one more time. Oh, me. Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch just like me.
Amen.